Hi, I'm Simon from Cyrus. I'm here at our Sunderland office to go through our floor measurement test rig. This has all the main floor measurement systems that we would find in the water industry. And today I'm going to talk about critical depth flumes. This is a critical depth rectangular venturi flume. They're almost universally used for the measurement and control of flow that go forward to a treatment works. It has a low head loss, which means the passage of solids can go forward to treatment. The principle of operation is that we control the flow here, so we have an accurate method of gauging the depth of fluid. We can then use an ultrasonic or a radar or some kind of level gauge to measure the depth of fluid. And by knowing the dimensions of the throat width, the channel width and the throat length, we were able to calculate the flow rate. Three main problems I've found over the years with flumes are the approach length, the ability for the flume to free discharge, and maintenance, or lack of maintenance. In terms of the approach length, British standard states that it should be 10 times the channel width. So in this example here, we do have 10 times the channel width, albeit that the flow is coming, is dropping into the front end of the flume. So as you can see here, we have fairly turbulent flow conditions. As you can see, as they get further down towards the gauging section, it goes a lot more smoother, which means it's better for gauging the depth and subsequently measuring the flow rate. Commonly, people don't have enough space for an approach length and try to get by without a long approach. This means that the turbulence you have here moves further down, so you don't get as accurate flow. The introduction of pen stocks to try and control the flow, again has the effect of causing turbulence and swirl further down. So it's absolutely critical that you have a really good approach length. Another of the problems that we come across is the flume's inability to free discharge. That being that the flow must exit the flume. So a small discharge pipe or a blocked discharge pipe or perhaps a returns pipe positioned here pointing up towards the flume can prevent that flow exiting. I can demonstrate with this valve as I push the valve down what we can see is we see the standing wave now creeping up into the flume throat section and as the gaps restricted even further we see the flume go into a drowned condition. It's now level all the way through, and this depth now begins to rise, causing the flow meter to overread. The most common problem we have with rectangular flumes on sewage treatment works is a lack of maintenance. Sediment will drop out in this approach channel, and if left unchecked, will simply cause the fluid flow to, to increase in depth due to the sediment buildup on the base. If you have an inch of sediment in this channel, then the fluid depth is going to overread by an inch. One of the key factors that that can cause is if you have an upstream weir set at a certain depth to control your FFT flow, then you're going to go to storm early, thus breaching your FFT consent requirements. The most common method of actually measuring the depth in a flume is to use an air range and ultrasonic sensor. Now we haven't got one above the flume, but we've got one here above the V-notch weir. The principle is exactly the same, it's just simply measuring the depth of fluid. So there's two basic methods, one is a fixed calibration plate. In this case the plate goes swings down under the path of the ultrasonic sensor. We know what that plate's set at so we can simply read it off what the flow meter tells us. Another method is to use a portable calibration plate. So we see this bracket arrangement here has clearly referenced what colour colour I'm going to use, in this case black. I put the black colour into the mount. Again, the plate is in the path of the ultrasonic sensor, so it's now reading a different depth. The sticker here tells you what the calibration reference height is, and then we can see that go onto the flow meter after a minute or two once it settles. New regulations by the Environment Agency are going to put 
far greater emphasis on FFT measurement. In my opinion, a critical depth flume is by far the easiest way of measuring FFT flows. It's easy to check, it's easy to maintain and to provide reliable flow data. There will be a lot of old flumes in various states of disrepair throughout the UK on small old treatment works. A little bit of TLC on some of these flumes could bring them up to FFT standard. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions or queries please get in touch with us.